So there I was, turning myself into a man of the future so I could try and feed the fish of the future to the nation. Ladies, would you like to try the fish of the future? She likes it. <laughs> but how did it come to this? I was supposed to be making a programme about Britain's really disgusting food. There's all sorts of horrible, mucusy, <laughs> weird drips coming out, some of which will undoubtedly have come from the gonads. So, well, let me tell you, it was a story involving tons of fish, some which looked a bit odd, <laughs> and some which tasted a bit odd. An awful lot that were dead, and some that weren't. Oh, jeez. Oh. A story involving some pretend prawns. Voila! Some cuddly animals. The associates of whale killers and some celebrities. Katie, do you work? Give me to Nobu. And the realisation that in the world of fish, a world of rule-breaking and waste, I could take disgusting food to a whole new level. The level of ethically disgusting. Under you. You'll have the after you. Morning. It's uh, 20 to 4. Uh, this is Brixham Harbour in Devon. And I'm waiting for uh, a salty sea dog to come and collect me in his uh, trawler, take me out fishing, and I'm, uh, I'm ready for action. Feel fresh, feel full of excitement about uh, getting out there and getting on some fish. I hope it's, you know, stable. There you go. So, as salty sea dog Graham sails me three miles out to sea in his trusty trawler at some ungodly hour of the morning, let me explain what was going on. Right, we're at Macro, Cash and Carry. Let's go and find some crap. Well, me and my hidden camera had been trawling the cash and carries for some disgusting seafood. And there, among the fish cakes and the prawn toast and the popcorn shrimp, I stumbled upon something interesting. Serimi prawn shapes. Serimi is fish meat with sorbitol. Now, don't be fooled. Serimi prawns are not actually prawns. That's why they're half the price of real prawns. What they are is a way of using up fish no one wants by disguising it as prawns. Excuse me, mate, can I, can I just check this with you? These... They're not it... actual prawn... Right, there's no actual prawn meat in them. Mm, no. Because it, it almost seems like Surimi prawns from the, the Far East somewhere. That was quite exciting, but yeah, so... I had some there, oh, oh, I bought fresh ones. Yeah. I thought, oh, they're very juiced, they were... OK, no, thanks for the warning. Something was clearly, I hate to say it, fishy in the world of fish. Fish were having to masquerade as other fish in order to get eaten. And in my local supermarket, the fish I was expecting to eat in my cheap fish fingers was no longer there. We've got uh, Asda, Spark Price, 10 fish fingers, minced white fish in breadcrumbs, and Bird's Eye, 10 value fish fingers, which also is minced white fish in breadcrumbs. Someone appeared to have systematically removed the cod from my favourite Friday night snack. What are you about to do now? They're going to slow the boat down yep. and chuck the net over. And how long will you leave it in the water for? About four hours. And basically, it's just the look of the draw, how many fish are going to get in that area. I'd taken my cod-free fingers of fish to see Igor, my local purveyor of seafood. I mean, presumably, normal fish fingers are made with cod, aren't they? Traditional. Blood me, look at that. I mean, uh, you can't see too much fish in there. Probably only fish hands and bellies and stuff like that. The stuff that you would give to a cat, yes, they would... Yes, that's going to fish fingers. They're not going to use cod, no. definitely not. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Which fish goes in there, I can't really identify. So really, any bits of waste white fish would be ideal to make a... To make a fish finger like that, yeah. The question was, where had all the cod gone? I'm feeling a bit queasy. So I've decided to uh, get down on deck, stretch out and try and uh, rest and... Uh, 
keep my mind off me stomach. Only another eight hours to go. According to a bloke called Willie at Greenpeace, we've already used up most of the cod around our island. But it's not just cod that's going to end up disappearing from your supermarket. After my first girlfriend heartlessly dumped me, my mum told me there's plenty more fish in the sea. It turns out she was lying. When you go to your supermarket now and look at where your fish fingers come from, mm -hmm. your fish fingers don't come from the North Sea and from, from cod anymore. They come from pollock, which is fished in the Pacific. So it's halfway around the world. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows you how much we've done to our local fisheries um, and, kind of how, and how much of a global problem this is. The scientists have told us that about 90% of the big fish are gone, so cod, tuna, marlin. Really? So that's not a lot left. And some scientists have suggested that if we keep going at current trends, you actually are looking at losing most of the big commercial fish stocks by the middle of this century. The actual date some scientists have set for the end of all commercial fishing, if we carry on as we are, is 2048. Coming out, coming out of the water. Look at that. The ocean's bounty. Come to daddy. That's why I ended up at sea, trying to find out how on earth we could end up running out of fish. Oh, wow, look at that! Oh, my gosh. So they're lemon sole you're putting in the bucket. Very lively. Graham had been dragging his nets in the middle of the sea for, well, anything he could get a decent price for. Hey, oh, that's, that's a dogfish. You never play with them while I'm doing this. But it was quickly apparent that Graham had caught quite a lot of fish that he wasn't going to even try selling. These fish had a name, the discards, and Willie had told me all about them. Now, this is, is a huge waste of life. Mm. I mean, it, it varies depending on the fishery, but you can be throwing away 30, 40, in some places up to kind of 70 or 80 percent of the catch. And that's fisheries for things and like dead, place and prawns, yeah. So it's, it's a really wasteful way of doing it. It's worth their while to catch a load of fish they don't need and then sort it all out and push it overboard. Yeah, we're really wasteful when it comes to catching fish. And because it's done out of our own sight, mm -hmm. it just gets allowed to happen. And the whole of the fishing business will go down the pan. Well, that's the irony, of course, is that the, the, the fishing industry is effectively committing a long, slow suicide yeah. by, by doing what it's doing. Look at that, these, these are all whiting and they're just going back in the sea. Seems a shame. There's just no demand. My only if, Brits, if, if I was to catch 10 barges of whiting, half of them will be left on the market. So you're just wasting your time. If you're lucky, you might get 20 pence for the small whiting. So waste of work. Work. Graham had thrown back almost half of his catch, dead. But he wasn't just some rogue, psycho, fish-murdering lunatic. Everyone was at it. For every two fish we catch, we waste one, and it gets thrown back in dead. The thing is, fishing isn't the most precise form of hunting. If you want a fisherman to catch you a tuna for your sushi, he could end up catching some rare turtles or birds, and they end up dead. If you want a fisherman to catch you a bass for supper, he might just net himself a dolphin, and that ends up dead. And if you want a fisherman to fill your tin with fish, he might bag himself an endangered whale that ends up dead. Still, if he accidentally catches a shark, in places like Spain and Portugal, he can at least get a few quid for its fin on the black market. Then he'll throw the rest of it back alive, whereupon it will sink to the bottom and end up dead. I decided to try and stop the dwarf whiting and the pig ugly dogfish joining the 27 million tons of dead fish that get thrown to the bottom of the sea every year. Captain Riley gets his hands dirty, gets his hands in all the giblets. Look at that. It's, it's obscene all this goo in the inside. Oh, jeez. What happened then? You love the animal rights on, do you? Yeah, but it was wriggling, wasn't it? I don't want it still to be wriggling. I want to get it to die. <laughs> you love the greens after you. Ah! Mm -hmm. I think it's dead now. 
Andrew, I've got this. Hey, don't cut them. Good. No.